Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is a big day making headlines this morning. 17 area school districts headed back to classroom today. I have an update on what the latest ruling by the Texas Supreme Court means for mask wearing. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little humid after all that rain, but we're at 72 degrees, not too bad. All those Sunday storms were nice if you were lucky to get one. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is August 16th. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great weekend and hope you got a chance at rain. We did. It was pretty nice. We did too. Up in my end of town, Mike Ostrager is here with more on that. You guys predicted we might have a random shower or storm out there, Mike. And wow, there's our shot and good morning. Yeah, you saw those things. Good morning. And and they were developing up to the north in that outflow boundary, you know, watch on radar. And I was like, come on, come on. And all of a sudden, and that thing, because we're not too far from each That's other, right. sat there. Yes, it did. Wow. The airport, uh, 15 hundredths of an inch of rain officially. I, I must have had at least a couple of inches. Yeah, you so, did too. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be the case again. You know, of course, not everybody saw rain yesterday, and that'll be the case again uh, this afternoon with more of those showers and thunderstorms popping up this morning. Nothing on radar right now. We've had some uh, hints of fog now about 45 minutes ago. Bernie stage was down to just over a mile. Visibility has come back up. Nothing's being reported elsewhere in the metropolitan area. Some fog off to the east of Gonzales as well as Victoria and a hint of it up around Austin, but with the moisture in the ground and we have had some clear skies overnight and those are a couple of the ingredients to feed some of this fog. So uh, just keep an eye out for the next few hours and as we approach sunrise, that's sometimes when the fog gets a lot thicker. Mold is on the low side. It's probably a venture guess going to be going up later on today uh, with all that moisture in the ground. Yeah, it's not bad out there temperature wise. I mean, 72 degrees. Yes, plenty of humidity in that patchy fog here and there and then later on this afternoon afternoon. Uh, we'll have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds, some scattered showers and thunderstorms around the air, about a 40% chance for some rain. It is going to be hot today, 94, still not quite up to a normal high. We're going to be staying mid and maybe even upperish 90s as we approach the uh, end of the week and a couple more days with a stray shower or two. More on that in just a few moments. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. This morning, the mask mandate issued for public schools by Bear County leaders last week is no longer in effect, at least for now. That's because last night, the Texas Supreme Court ruled in favor of Governor Greg Abbott and Attorney General Ken Paxton temporarily banning mask mand mandates here in Bear County, as well as Dallas County. A local district judge will determine during the injunction hearing today whether local governments can mandate masks. Same goes for Dallas County, which has an injunction hearing set for August 24th. City of San Antonio issued a statement in response to the court's latest ruling. City Attorney Andy Segovia said in part, the governor cannot use his emergency powers to suspend laws to provide local entities the needed flexibility to act in an emergency. His suspension authority is meant to facilitate action, not to prohibit it. You can read more of the ongoing issues and find a growing list of local districts responding to the ruling right now at ksat.com. And this morning here in San Antonio, it's returned to the classroom for many students and families. Uh, yes, numerous districts are starting up the fall semester this morning. Max Massey joins us live at Southside ISD. Max, good morning. Good morning, guys. There's this aura of excitement. You know, the, it's the first day of school for so many kids, but there are a lot of questions. We're here joined. Randy Escamilla, Southside ISD. So, Randy, First and foremost, what are you guys most excited about this year? Well, good morning, Max. We are excited. First of all, we're excited to have our kids back. This is a big day for children. Uh, a lot of kids had those uh, nervous jitters last night, and we'll have them again this morning as they come to school. And so we're excited to have them back. We know that it's important and critical for children to be in school. And so we're going to do everything we can to get them to the level to where they need to be. All right, now, a lot of questions when it comes to the mask mandates across school districts. What are you guys looking at right now? I just want our families to know that we are going to abide by any order. We believe, whether we agree with it or not, that it's important that we maintain order. We also know that uh, wearing masks mitigates the spread of this coronavirus, especially the Delta variant, which is so contagious. So we're going to do everything we can to keep our children safe while they're here. We're going to do temperature checks when children come into school. We're going to do contact tracing when we find out that there is uh, uh, coronavirus among children, among faculty. And so uh, we're going to do everything we can to make it safe and to make 
this uh, a wonderful experience for our students and faculty. Speaking of the wonderful experience, you were excited because you were talking about some lofty goals you guys have this year. We have huge lofty goals and we know that uh, our school district is on that trajectory to be uh, on the rise and so we anticipate by the end of this school year we will definitely be among the top 10 school districts in San Antonio possibly even among the top three so uh, we know that it's possible there's a lot of work to do the coronavirus isn't going to stop us and we're going to keep moving forward all right randy thank you so much and guys we have a very exciting morning plan we are talking about slushies we're talking about robots we're talking about theater and the arts stay with us all morning long we're here on south side there you go guys back to you for now thank you max Turning to coronavirus and the latest numbers for Bear County in the latest report, the seven-day average of COVID-19 infections is at 1,391. And in our hospitals, there are 1,299 COVID patients with 333 in the ICU and 214 on ventilators. Just last month, an ABC News poll showed more than half of Americans approved of President Biden's handling of the Afghan troop withdrawal. But that may be changing as hundreds of demonstrators outside the White House are protesting now that the Taliban are taking control of Kabul. ABC's Alice Pache has more. This morning, growing pressure on the Biden administration as Afghanistan falls into the hands of the Taliban. I think it's, it's an uh, unmitigated disaster of epic proportions. Texas Congressman Michael McCall delivering this fierce criticism. This is going to be a stain on this president and his presidency. And I think he's going to have blood on his hands for what they did. And it's not just Republicans slamming Biden's decision to withdraw troops from the war-torn country. Congressman Vicente Gonzalez writing on Twitter, there's no way to hide it. The situation in Afghanistan is another shame on this administration. Withdrawal was never going to be easy, but it didn't need to come to this. What we're watching right now in Afghanistan is what happens when America withdraws from the world. Republican America Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who serves on the House Armed Services Committee, saying the Taliban's rapid takeover didn't have to happen. But Cheney puts the blame on both the Trump and Biden administrations. So everybody, you know, the Rand Paul, Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, Joe Biden view of the world here is fundamentally dangerous and irresponsible and wrong. On Sunday, members of the House and Senate were debriefed on the unfolding situation, according to ABC's Rachel Scott. Morning, some members outrage Republican leader Kevin McCarthy calling this an embarrassment to our nation. But President Biden has remained firm on this. He says he inherited this situation and he says he made the choice not to pass it on to a fifth administration. This morning, the Biden administration continuing to defend its decision. We went to Afghanistan 20 years ago uh, with one mission in mind, and that was to deal with the people who attacked us on 9-11. Uh, and that mission has been successful. President Biden is scheduled to be at Camp David until Wednesday. And as of right now, there are no plans for him to return to Washington early. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. The National Hurricane Center says Fred has regained tropical storm status in the Gulf of Mexico as parts of the Caribbean began to see impacts from Tropical Depression Grace. Forecasters say Fred is forecast to move across the Gulf and reach the coast as early as this afternoon. People from Alabama to Central Florida panhandle could be affected. Meanwhile, Grace is forecast to bring heavy rainfall to the Lesser and Greater Antilles over the next few days. Forecasters say both tropical systems pose a flooding threat. A second person has died from flooding caused by monsoon type rains in far western Texas. A family spokesman said a two year old girl died Friday of injuries she suffered in the collapse of a basement wall at her family's El Paso home. The girl's 65 year old grandmother also was killed in the Thursday night collapse in the family's flooded basement. And storms this weekend caused some problems at the state capitol in Austin. Take a look at this video. You can see a major leak at the capitol building causing the halls to flood. The video was shot by Sloan Byerly, chief of staff for the Texas House of Representatives. In a recent tweet, Governor Abbott said that the state preservation board is working to address those flooding issues. Right now it's 439, about 72 degrees. And coming up next, we're checking on the San Antonio Spurs competing in summer play in Las Vegas. Outside with live cam, showers and storms in the area yesterday. We are ripe for possibly foggy conditions here or there this morning. Mike is going to keep tabs on that. We'll be right back.
442 Spurs back in action last night in Vegas for game four of summer league play against the Brooklyn Nets. Early first quarter was all San Antonio. Joe Wieskamp knocking down the three for the 14-4 lead. Then Trey Jones comes up with a steal and takes it back for two of his 18. Spurs go up 22 to 8. They led 30 to 20 after one and 53-40 at the half. Fast forward the fourth. Spurs down by three. First rounder Josh Primo nails the three ball to tie the game at 91. Finished with a team high 21 points, but it wasn't enough. Cameron Thomas went off for Brooklyn, scoring a game high 36 points. Spurs fall 104 100. They now play the Thunder later today. COVID-19 has struck San Antonio FC for the first time this season due to multiple positive tests within the organization. Team's match against New York was postponed. No makeup date has been announced as of yet. In the meantime, local product Ethan Bryant is getting an opportunity to play elsewhere. San Antonio loaned Bryant to the Richmond Kickers for the remainder of the season. Bryant says that he wants to help his new team any way he can, and he's ready to show what he can do. Next up, San Antonio FC set to take on the uh, Real Monarchs. I, I guess as I say, they're from Salt Lake. I'll figure it out. The game is set for Saturday at 730 at Toyota Field. And time now is 443 and about 72 degrees out there. Up next, dramatic steps. Many cities and towns are taking to deal with the shortage of school bus drivers. Welcome back. It's about 446. As kids are heading back to class, many school districts across the country are struggling to hire school bus drivers. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, school bus driver shortage. And it almost is a perfect storm of everything that is going on. As children across the country head back to school, it's fast becoming a nationwide issue. From Pennsylvania to Florida to Colorado, local officials are in an all-out search to fill vacant school bus driver slots. We've had almost 18 months of a break here that a lot of these uh, districts who ended up not keeping their bus drivers on the payroll, they found other jobs elsewhere. Savannah Chatham Public Schools in Georgia was short by more than 110 drivers to start the year. Pittsburgh delaying the start of school by two weeks because they don't have enough drivers. And those aren't the only areas struggling with the shortage. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you the dramatic steps other cities and towns are taking to deal with this massive back-to-school headache. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. The 7.2 magnitude earthquake that rocked Haiti over the weekend, killing nearly 1,300 people, has hit very close to home for a San Antonio woman. That's after she survived a massive earthquake that hit Haiti back in 2010. So 21-year-old Bethley Paul was 10 when the earthquake caused her school building to collapse on her. Paul was flown to the United States for medical care. Since then, she has been thriving as an American citizen. She says she was devastated to see the headlines of this recent earthquake, but she hopes her survival story inspires Haitians to push through and Americans to help out. Haiti may not recover soon, but in the long run, I'm hoping it will. <laughs> so just have hope and keep helping and something good will come out of this because that's what I believe because if I don't believe anything else, I may go crazy. <laughs> but something good will definitely come out of this. Paul says she struggles with PTSD, but is pursuing a career in psychology to help others with their mental health. Haiti is also having to deal with the tropical storm that's approaching the country right now. And here at home, we got a lot of rain yesterday. Well, some of us did at least. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I walked outside yesterday afternoon, Mike, and I was like, showers and storms coming in. And uh, you guys talked about it last week that our best chance probably was going to be on Sunday. Yeah, Saturday, I, I think there were one or two of them out there somewhere, you know, didn't materialize to too much of anything. Uh, but yeah, yesterday was not for the folks that did get some of that rain and boy, it was coming down. I mean, this almost looks like it could have been my backyard with all a heavy, heavy rain and it just didn't stop watching the radar, which by the way, again, get that uh, KSAT weather app and you can 
get the radar on it and that one cell just kind of sat there and pretty good lightning show as well. Nothing is showing up on radar right now. No problems out there as far as any visibility. We've got some mid 60s in parts of the hill country right now. 72 here in town, so we are definitely on the cool side of things, which no complaints here and the humidity. Well, dew point temperatures are fairly comfortable, comfortable around most of the area, but you saw our temperature was 71 dew points right around 71. So got a relatively speaking a lot of uh, humidity out there, and that's why we're seeing some patches of fog and may see some more fog develop throughout the rest of the morning. Going back 12 hours on the satellite and radar loop, and there are those big storms that popped up. And we also, as you can see, have a fairly decent flow coming in here out of the north right now. And so that's what's helping with some of these lower temperatures than what we saw most all of last week. Don't get used to this though, because low temperature is going to be staying mid 70s throughout the, uh, the rest of the week. Later on this afternoon, we will start to see a few more of the showers scattered about popping up around the area, probably about a 40% chance for some rain today and lesser chances the next couple of days. I think we'll still see a few of those scattered about here tomorrow and even going into Wednesday afternoon. Although again, fewer and a little bit further between as far as any rain is concerned. All right, here's what's going on in the tropics. You've got Fred and then we have Grace again. That's moving right across Hispaniola and then there is tropical depression number eight. That's just going to sort of spin around out there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. But first of all, with Fred, that is going to continue to work its way up to the north, make land tropical storm and then go up into the uh, Tennessee Valley. So that's moving across the panhandle of Florida, uh, Alabama, Georgia. And then you've got Grace. Now it's going to be cutting right across. Of course, Fred moved on the north side of Cuba. This one's going to be skirting just on the south side of Cuba and getting back up to tropical storm strength and then moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Obviously, when it's moving in this direction, something we need to watch. However, the trend is that it's going to be staying further on down to the south, and that's what a lot of the uh, spaghetti models indicate as well that the majority of the path right now is going to keep it well down to the south of us. Obviously, it's a long way off, so we're going to keep watching it. 94 degrees this afternoon, a couple of scattered showers, a few thunderstorms here and there. Decent downpours can be expected with it. I think a, a lesser chance of rain the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to be staying pretty warm, although once again, normal high temperature today, 97 degrees. Then we start to drop down the next few days historically. 96 for the normal high temperature, which we're going to be right at uh, as we go into the latter part of the week and maybe even a little bit above that by the uh, weekend. It's going to be hot the rest of the week, obviously. Well, Mother Nature hasn't let us down yet. Everything's every time she tries to escalate temperatures, we get right. we get that we get a little, little reprieve at the very last second. See if that holds true and yeah. continues that trend. Well, she's we had a good so. pattern so far. Yeah, yeah. Not too bad. Not too yeah. bad at all. We have faith. <laughs> yes. Shaky faith, but we have faith. So. 452, about 73 degrees. And coming up next, a big weekend for Ryan Reynolds. Plus, a music legend is retiring from the road. 5 Till, latest movie starring Ryan Reynolds is doing better than expected at the box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Don't have a good day. Have a great day. It's an even bigger opening than anticipated for Free Guy. The comedy starring Ryan Reynolds and Kelling Eve's Jody Comer pulled in $28.4 million domestically in a theater only debut weekend. That's not only good enough for first place, it's nearly $10 million more than the highest pre release estimate. This is suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. Last week's number one, The Suicide Squad, takes a big header to fifth place. He's going to come for me. The debuts of Don't Breathe 2 and the Aretha Franklin biopic Respect took second and fourth, respectively. Tony Bennett is retiring from the road. The 95-year-old singing legend canceled his remaining tour dates this year for health reasons and won't schedule any new ones. He revealed earlier this year that he's battling Alzheimer's disease. We get it. You're a vampire killer with the stakes and the reflexes and all that. Great job. Hulu's vampire comedy What We Do in the Shadows has scored a fourth season renewal. Season three drops next month. And Madonna is 63 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, Madonna, ABC Madonna, News. Madonna.
And time now is 456 and about 73 degrees out there. Our back to school coverage continues this morning. 17 districts headed back to classes today. We'll check in with two of the bigger schools and get an update on those mask mandates. Plus, we're going to tell you about this daytime drive-in theater that just debuted that lets you watch movies in bright sunlight. That's ahead in Tech Bites. Cryptocurrency costing amateur investors a lot of money ahead on GMSA at 6 this morning. Crypto, cons, and how to spot them. And a quick check of the roads with Transguide. There's a look at I-10 and UTSA Boulevard. Things are moving a little slow right there. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos in just a minute. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We're here live at Southside ISD all morning long. We are highlighting everything that students and parents need to know before the first bell of the new semester, including this beautiful library. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Yeah, it's a big back to school Monday. We had some big storms in the area on Sunday. What does the work week hold? We'll check you with Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday the 16th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us and happy back to school for a lot of districts out there today. Yeah, 17 count them all over our uh, area. Well, let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see what kind of day they're going to have weather wise. Good morning, everyone. Well, starting off uh, fairly pleasant out there. We've got some lower temperatures. Temperatures had uh, when that uh, gust front moved through yesterday afternoon out at the airport, the thermometer dropped a good 20 degrees in behind that thing. Some of that rain cool air as well and some of that Relatively speaking, coolish air is still in place, 72 degrees, which is a whole lot lower than where we've been in the mornings of the past, even going through most all of last week. Although you see 72 and then the bottom number over there, dew point at 70. So those are running neck and neck, and that's kind of setting the stage for some patchy fog. 94 for a high temperature later on today, and some folks will be seeing some more of those uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon trying to develop. The aquifer went up a tenth of a foot in yesterday's reading, and the allergens mold is still on the low side, although have a feeling that with all that moisture in the ground, mold may be going up. Uh, that updated count is going to be coming out in a few hours. All right, visibility. Now there's no problem at last report in and around the metropolitan area as far as any fog, but earlier this morning, Bernie stage was down to one mile at one point. It came back up, but that can change very, very quickly. A little bit of fog around uh, Fredericksburg, Gonzales and Victoria. So just be on the lookout for some of that, uh, especially obviously east of I-35, some of that fog to uh, form up. So not too awfully warm this morning, which is a, a nice start, but we do have the humidity out there and then a few scattered showers and thunderstorms. Otherwise, it is going to still remain hot and humid later on today. Couple of showers, a little bit lesser chance for rain tomorrow. We'll still have one or two of them around the area, even on into Wednesday. And then it's going to be uh, heating up. Temperature is going to be mid and even pushing toward the upper 90s as we finish out this week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority on this Monday morning. Stephen Cavazos, good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, we have a shot here at Transguide of I 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Uh, there was some construction happening out here overnight. Uh, a few flashing lights that people may have seen if they were driving through that area. Again, some overnight construction that was taking place right there. And according to the maps, uh, that is actually right there at I-10 westbound between UTSA Boulevard and Loop 1604. Now, those exit ramps were closed because of some striping operations. And again, uh, this is an overnight deal, but it should be wrapping up by August 20th. That should be by the end of the week. So something for the early morning commuters to be on the lookout for. But uh, again, a pretty quiet morning as we're looking at the maps here around the Alamo City. Lots of green, which is what we like to see as uh, we start a new work week and taking a look right now at our inbound times. They are looking pretty good as well. 24 minutes coming in from I-10 and burning to the downtown San Antonio area. And if you are coming in from Bull Verde on 281, it's 24 minutes at this hour and 26 on 35 from New Braunfels. Taking one last look here at Transguide where things are moving. It looks like we do have a few vehicles out on the roadway. Now something to keep in mind, more buses will be out there later this morning because 17 school districts are starting today. We will have more updates and hear from the head of transportation with NEISD coming up in the next few minutes here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. We have late breaking news. One building, including two businesses, have gone up in flames on the city's east side. That fire broke out overnight at the corner of East Commerce and Walters. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, how bad is that damage? Well, from what we can see, it appears to be pretty extensive, both to this uh, mart here. This is the Arena Food Mart. And then around the corner, we have Anthony's Chicken. They're in the same building, and it seems that the fire broke out uh, within one of those, affecting both sides. Now, if you look at those um, 
the, the coverings on the windows, the uh, gates, you can see that they're all cut open, sort of like tuna cans. Firefighters had a very hard time getting inside because this building was so secured. And so it appears that they had to cut holes in those security gates that are around the windows and doors. Let me give you a look at the video. This fire broke out after two o'clock this morning. Firefighters got here. They found heavy smoke coming out of this building along with some flames. It took them, they say, about 20 minutes just to get inside because of how secure the building was. But once they were able to uh, breach that, they did get in there and knock down the fire. But again, it looks like from our vantage point that there is very extensive damage to both sides of this building. It doesn't appear that anyone was here at the time. We have not heard anything about anyone, including firefighters, being injured in this fire. And we're still waiting to hear if firefighters know what caused this. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A mass mandate issued from public schools by Bear County leaders last week is no longer in effect this morning, at least for now. Yesterday, the Supreme Court of Texas ruled in favor of Governor Greg Abbott and Attorney General Ken Paxton temporarily banning mass mandates here in Bear County as well as Dallas County. A local district judge will determine during an injunction hearing today whether the local governments can mandate mass. Same goes for Dallas County, which has a hearing set for August 24th. Southside ISD is one of the school districts starting back up this morning and for some students it will be the first time they will be back in the classroom since March of 2020. Max Massey joins us live at Southside ISD and Max we see you're now inside. I gotta say guys it is inside we are this beautiful new library here in Southside ISD and of course as Mike was talking about throughout the morning it's hot and humid out there so we like to be in the air conditioning and of course joined here Principal Joel Gaines so Right off the bat, you know, what is your message to students and parents? So, you know, a lot of students, this is the first time being in the physical classroom since March of 2020. Yeah, we are excited that they're here. That's our first message. That we're just so excited that they're here. We know how important instruction is. We know how important their education is. And we're just so happy that they're going to be here in person. Uh, but, you know, the main thing is, is that we want to make sure that they're safe. And so that's uh, parents' number one goal is that they have a safe kid. And so that's what we try to do. Uh, and we're going to make sure that they're safe. Now, both of us wearing masks. What are you guys' stances on masks right now? Well, currently right now, you know, safety is our top priority. And so we're highly recommending that all students wear masks. We know that uh, it's been in the news that, that that's changed overnight. But uh, we expect that the majority of our students will be wearing them today. And so when students are back in the classroom, you guys have so many exciting things going on. One of which, this beautiful new touchscreen TV. Break it down for us. Yeah, so our boards are going to be interactive. We have a lot of them that are going into the classroom this year. So you can see that they're touchscreen. Um, this is our website. But teachers can incorporate this in their lessons. Um, so the kids can actually t um, have something that's tangible. Um, you can see on our website here we have stuff on transportation where you can actually get your bus uh, number today if, you, if you're waking up and don't know what bus to get on. It's on our website today. So Fantastic. 72-inch touchscreen TVs in the schools, in the classrooms. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, I might have to come here, watch some preseason football here, but <laughs> this is all for educational purposes. We're gonna be here throughout the morning. We are talking robots. We're even talking about healthy slushies. Don't worry, we're gonna be here all morning long. Guys, back to you. Healthy, that's good news. All right, thank you, Max. So of course, these are just a couple of the districts heading back to class this week. 17, including Alamo Heights, Kerrville, Judson, Floresville, many others are also welcoming students back today. And when it comes to all the back to school info you need, check out KSAT.com. We have everything you need to know regarding the most recent information on masks, which is a little confusing, mental health for students, and even information on homeschooling. It's all available online right now. And time now is 5.08 and it's about 72 degrees out there. So I had a first look at a brand new kind of drive-in theater you can watch during the day. Also up next, despite two decades of training and billions of dollars, it took a little more than a week for the Taliban to seize control of most of Afghanistan. What's next for the U.S.'s role in the country? Back here at home, outside with live cam, waking up on another Back to School Monday. We told you there were more to come, and there are still are. Next week's another big one. But we've got you covered right here on GMSA. Good morning, and thanks for starting your day with us. Now to the escalating crisis in Afghanistan as the Taliban effectively complete their control of the country.
Starting today, the State Department says it will evacuate thousands of Americans who've been living in Afghanistan. ABC's Julie McFarlane has the latest. This morning, Afghans and Americans trapped in Afghanistan, watching in horror as the Taliban seizes control, declaring the nation the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. The Taliban broadcasting on live TV from the country's equivalent of the Oval Office as the ousted president fled the country. The U.S. Embassy now shuttered and the American flag taken down. Troops rushing the American ambassador and diplomats to the airport in Kabul, where thousands of panic-stricken Afghans are scrambling to escape the country. Just cases of some pandemonium at the airport, uh, individuals who are not at the airport who have been told to shelter in place, uncertain of how they will navigate through Kabul to get to the airport. At least 500 embassy staffers have already escaped, but many American allies still remain. Now, as many as 6,000 U.S. troops deployed to help evacuate those left behind, including embassy personnel, Afghan interpreters and their families, and those who helped the U.S. during 20 years of war. Well, ABC News has learned that the U.S. has temporarily halted evacuation flights for Afghan interpreters and their families to Fort Lee in Virginia, according to two sources familiar with the matter. Currently, tens of thousands of Afghans have applied for U.S. visas or refugee status. It's understood that the Biden administration has instead been focusing on evacuating American personnel first. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. It's now 513, about 72 degrees. And still ahead, how Facebook is trying to make its messenger calls more secure. I've made progress with my mental health. So when I started having unintentional body movements called tardive dyskinesia, I ignored them. But when the movements in my hands and feet started throwing me off at work, I finally had to say, it's not okay. It was time to talk to my doctor about Austedo. She said that Austedo helps reduce TD movements in adults, while I continue with most of my mental health medications. Austedo can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, behaviors, feelings, or have suicidal thoughts. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. Don't take Ostedo if you have liver problems or taking Respirin, Tetrabenazine, or Valbenazine. Ostedo may cause a regular or fast heartbeat, restlessness, movements mimicking Parkinson's disease, fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, and sweating. Talk to your doctor about Ostedo. It's time to treat TD. TD is not okay. Visit askforostedo.com. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is backtracking on new design changes. Some users complain that the updates were causing headaches, migraines, and eye strain. It's apparently all due to the higher visual contrast in the colors of buttons and links and a new font. Facebook is enhancing security for voice and video calls on Facebook Messenger. End-to-end -end encryption provides more privacy for users and keeps others from tapping into your communications. Facebook says video and voice calls are now as private as one-to-one -one text chats. And movie lovers outside Knoxville, Tennessee, can now get their drive-in fix in the daytime. The Loco Drive-In can show films in daylight thanks to an LED video board screen. It's able to show films in bright sunlight. Drive-in theaters became popular again during the pandemic as a safe alternative to traditional movie theaters. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Everybody in Texas would have the windows up with the AC going. I mean, <laughs> that's true. I mean, how does that work otherwise? Because part of the charm of going to a drive in, it was in the evening, the windows could be down. Nice and cool. And you put the little speaker mm -hmm. on the driver's side window, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I guess now you can like tune in your or radio. Probably, uh, get or probably get it. Or even your on your phone. phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Well, I won't knock it till we try it. Yeah, it might uh, be fun. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos has more on our back to school coverage. Hey, good morning, everybody. Well, things are looking pretty good as we're getting the school year started here off US 90 at it looks a little dark out there, but thankfully not many issues out on the roadways right now. We did have some construction out towards I-10 and 1604 that has since wrapped up out there, but use some caution later in the week. Right now, things are looking pretty good at this hour, which is good because we do have 17 school districts starting later this morning, and I did get a chance to speak with the executive director of the head of, tra or tra head of transportation, I should say, with NEISD earlier in the week. You now, he did tell us that they have been preparing for this day for quite some time, actually. Ever, ever since the last school year ended. He said buses have been scrubbed down, tires have been changed out, and they expect 15,000 bus riders to disembark at 8,000 bus stops. Take a look at what he had to say. It's, uh, it, it's a large task, 
Our buses are going to run about 17,000 miles per day starting on uh, Monday. And uh, it, it really takes all summer to get ready uh, for the year ahead. And just as a reminder, when you do see those buses later today, here are some bus stopping rule, bus passing rules. That is two lanes. If you're driving down those two lanes, remember, if you see those stopping flashlights, be sure to stop for those buses. And the same rule does apply when you're driving down a multi lane area. And if you are traveling down an area where a road that has a divided highway, just be sure to slow down if you're traveling in the opposite direction. Some friendly reminders as we get this school year started. We know there's going to be tons of buses out on the roads later this morning, so just keep it safe, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Good reminder. And yeah. lots of excited kids running around, darting That's around. That's true. So, yeah. Watch it. Very right. true. Who got rain yesterday? We did. We, we no, did. I just got clouds. Yeah. Uh, clouds. I was at the pool, and, you know, I did not get a tan at all. Or sunburn. Yeah, that was just but overcast. Got, no, overcast. Perfect example, though, if you are even on the cloudiest days, you can get burned very bad. Oh. The ultraviolet rays can, can poke through. So like the experts always say, always wear sunscreen. A uh, lot of folks, I mean, even if you hear this off in the distance and like uh, Stephen said, he was out there at the pool, make sure you then lead the area because if you can hear lightning, you are definitely in the danger zone. And boy, it was quite a light show. Now, this is over there at Bay City, but uh, some of the lightning strikes sounded like they were in my backyard last uh, yesterday afternoon. And that's going to be the situation again today. Some folks didn't see rain. Some folks did. Might have gotten a whole bunch, 1,500th of an inch officially out there at the airport before the rain hit. Got up to 95 at the airport. But when that gust front moved on through and the rain cooled air, it knocked temperatures down about 20 degrees in the afternoon and some breezy conditions as well. And then today we are looking at uh, some low mid 90s. We're going to keep a few more clouds around later on this afternoon and rain chances. 40% chance for a shower thunderstorm. Of course, we'll have somewhat of a heat index, especially down to the southeast with that higher humidity down there. Here's the uh, computer model. And again, I was uh, kind of qualify this one. It's the broad brush. You know, it's kind of paints in uh, where rain is going to be. And yes, there is the chance for it. Like I said, about a 40% chance for some showers today. Still a few of those showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Lesser chance. Same thing on Wednesday and then an even lesser chance Thursday going into Friday. Now, as far as the tropics are concerned, of course, we've got three areas right now. There's Fred. That's going to be going up in toward making land today. It's a tropical storm right around Panhandle of Florida going into the Tennessee Valley. Tropical depression number eight, which is going to kind of spin out there. But we need to keep an eye on grace. It is back down to uh, tropical depression. It is going to be moving to the west. And there's a couple of different features, and one of them, which we have not seen pretty much all summer long is actually going to be helping us out. So there's Fred that's going to be working its way up into the Tennessee Valley. This high, which really, again, has not been plunked down on top of us, which has one of the reasons why we haven't been extremely hot this summer. That's going to start to build back in here. That's going to set up a blocking pattern. So that what Grace uh, and most computer models have it making land well to the south of us because this thing's going to start to build on in and that's going to block that down to the south. But on the other hand, that means it's going to be pretty hot with that thing settling in on top of us. 94 degrees this afternoon, scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms around the area. If you get some of these thunderstorms to sit there, you might have some uh, pretty hefty downpours. Tomorrow, 95, still some rain, 94 on Wednesday. Lesser chances for some rain. Can't rule one out completely, even Thursday. Um, hardly at all, though, and temperatures are going to be pretty hot mid and leaning toward the upper 90s heading in toward the uh, weekend. So Back to heat, but at least we got a, a break. Yeah, yeah, kind of a, a give and take, though, as far as that tropical storm potential is mm -hmm. concerned, pushes us down, but then we heat up. So hmm, I tell you, I was on Medina Lake on Saturday. Oh. Of course, it's way, way, oh, how way. Fish, how did fishing thing go? I didn't, I didn't catch anything. You didn't know. Yeah, but it was still fun. Being, but but Medina is still way, yeah. way low. And the last time it was this low, the only reason it filled back up is because we have the remnants of some tropical system uh, and it sat park there. over us for days. Um, I know we don't want that kind of scenario, right, but it would right. be nice to see some water back in there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And Thank better you, luck next time. Better luck next time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 523, about 72 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Disney ironically wants a free guy sequel. Plus, as Emma Stone is already getting ready for Corella 2. It's pretty much a Hollywood rule. If a movie does very well, they just keep making more of the same. CNN's David Daniel has that in today's Hollywood Minute. It appears Disney wants a Free Guy sequel. 
Ryan Reynolds, the star of the comedy adventure, broke the news on Twitter, noting the irony that Free Guy was billed as an original film, not based on previous intellectual property or a franchise. Disney underlined the irony on YouTube, posting a Free Guy clip in which the movie's game makers discuss whether to make a sequel to the game or something new. I'm Cruella. Speaking of sequels, Emma Stone has signed a return for the Cruella sequel. The follow-up was announced in early June, shortly after that film opened in theaters. Some things look better, baby. Just pass through. Elton John and Dua Lipa have teamed up for Cold Heart Panau Remix, featuring John singing lyrics from his 1989 single Sacrifice and Lipa responding with lyrics from John's 1972 classic Rocket Man. You could say Lipa's been waiting her whole life for this. Both Sacrifice and Rocket Man came out years before she was born. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Still making music videos. Yeah, interesting. Yes, so uh, 527, about 72 degrees. Afghanistan is facing the Taliban's return to power after the government fell this weekend. We're taking a look at what's next and how the U.S. is responding. It's back to school time for many, many districts this morning. Checking out our team with our at various schools and what that Texas Supreme Court decision late yesterday means for mask wearing today. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to meet a young San Antonio student who received a prestigious award for the community service. The Texas Supreme Court rules that masks can only be optional, not mandated for students in Bear County. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, what this means for any ISD students starting class today. Good morning, I'm Max Mazzi, and today is the first day of classes for so many students and families in our area, including Southside ISD, that is where we are right now. And take a look at this new and exciting school year, new and exciting robots. Look at all this going on. We even have a little drone we're gonna explain in just a couple minutes. And taking a look outside with live cam, it was nice to get some rain yesterday, well, for some of us, but right now we are starting the day at 72 degrees. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, August 16th. Happy back to school for many students, 17 districts in our surrounding area. A whole ton of folks. Yes. Good chance some of you watching right now are about to get the kids up, but uh, nice change out there. Typically this time of morning, we're hovering in the upper 70s to near mm -hmm. 80 degrees, Mike. That was the case pretty much all last week when we had those temperatures way up there in mid upper 70s and a ton of humidity. And uh, yeah, this morning it's more comfortable when you step outside. No problems visibility wise out there at the airport right now. We've got 72 degrees, although these two numbers are really close to each other, the temperature and the dew point. And with a very light wind, although it is out of the north, that's helping to keep these temperatures down. That was in behind those uh, big storms that moved through yesterday. But it kind of the, um, the ingredients are in place for some fog to form up, and we are now starting to see just hints of it going out 10, Bernie Stage, as well as in Kerrville. Bernie Stage had, uh, was down to about a mile visibility roughly two hours ago, so it can start going back and forth. Got some fog around Gonzales, a little bit at uh, Austin, and we're gonna have to watch it as we approach, especially sunrise when it usually gets thicker. Mold is on the low side. Updated count's gonna be coming out in uh, well, a couple of hours, and I have a, they have a strange feeling that mold may be going up, given the fact that the all the moisture in the ground from the rain yesterday. 89 at noon, a couple of more showers going to be developing. Nothing on radar right now. And then a few scattered showers and thunderstorms later on today. 94 high temperature still below the average normal high temperature, although we're going to be really close to it by the end of the week. Still some rain chances to start the first half of the week, but by later on, yeah, it's going to be a hot finish to this work week and school week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything we need to be concerned about on the roads? Not right now, Mike, and I think that's a pretty good sign. Looking pretty busy, though, here off 35 at Wiener. You can see that we do have a few more folks out on the roadways as we're getting the day really going. It's a new school year for a 17 school districts, and of course, we want to make sure that these roads are looking pretty good for those buses that we'll likely see out there later this morning. But let's go ahead and take a look right now. We do have a stall here on our maps. 35 southbound at West Martin Street. Uh, make sure you check those vehicles, especially if you're taking the kiddos to school later this morning. We want to make sure they get there on 
on time and safely, but not causing any issues in those southbound lanes of 35. Thankfully, still early enough to where we're not seeing any delays with traffic and you can see green is what we're seeing on the screen and that's a pretty good sign as we're getting the day started right now and the inbound times also looking pretty green here coming in from Seguin on I 10 29 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area right now if you're going to be traveling out the door and 22 minutes from 87 and from Lavernia and 28 minutes coming in from Floresville. So things are looking pretty good and shaping up to be pretty nice so far, but we're watching things closely and have more back to school safety tips for you to keep in mind. Mark Stephanie. Thanks, Stephen. An update to late breaking news. Security shutters are made to keep burglars out of windows, but they also stood in the way of firefighters who were trying to battle a fire on the east side. It destroyed two businesses at the corner of East Commerce and Walters. Katrina Weber is there with a live report and Katrina, it sounds like it must have been an especially challenging fire to fight. Well, yeah, it was according to one firefighter. This was like trying to get inside a bank vault. There actually are security gates on the windows and doors of this building. This houses two different businesses, Arena Food Mart and around the corner is Anthony's Chicken. Both of those businesses left with heavy damage from this fire overnight. It broke out a little bit after two this morning. We can show you the video from when firefighters got here. Uh, there were some flames they found, but only after they cut holes in those little uh, gates to see inside the business. That is the way that they said that they had to approach this. They didn't want to just enter this building blindly, not knowing what was inside. So they actually had to take their circular saw and cut into those gates so they could see inside, see that fire. They say once they got inside, they did have flames and heavy smoke. They went in very carefully because they say that the layout of the building also was dangerous to them. But ultimately, they did knock down the fire but again, heavy damage done to both businesses in there. And because it was so secured, they were pretty sure that no one was inside. They did not find anyone in there and no one was injured, including the firefighters. The, they're looking at the possibility that this is related to an electrical problem. There uh, was some work done here earlier yesterday. And uh, so they are believing that that is what caused the fire. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Other top stories this morning. The mass mandate issued for public schools in by Bear County leaders last week is no longer in effect, at least for now. This after the Texas Supreme Court ruled in favor of Governor Greg Abbott and Attorney General Ken Paxton Sunday afternoon, temporarily banning mask mandates here in Bear County as well as Dallas County. Sarah Costa is live at Cerna Elementary where students start classes today. Now, Sarah, Cerna, Sarah what does this mean for Bear County students? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. It means that students in all school districts in Bear County cannot be mandated to wear masks. They can only be optional, and that's at least for now, because a district judge will determine during an injunction hearing today whether the local governments can mandate masks. The same goes for Dallas County, which has an injunction hearing set for August 24th. The city of San Antonio issuing a statement this Last night, in response to the court's ruling, city attorney and Andy Segovia saying in part, quote, the governor cannot use his emergency powers to suspend laws that provide local entities the needed flexibility to act in an emergency. His suspension authority is meant to facilitate action, not prohibit it, end quote. And you, read, you can read more on the ongoing issues and find a growing list of local school districts responding to the ruling right now on KSAT.com. At one of NEISD's year-round schools, Castle Hills Elementary, NEISD Superintendent Dr. Sean Micah said on Friday that Castle Hills Elementary has 18 confirmed student cases of COVID-19 and four staff cases. Also, their data shows 12 of those student cases were due to close contact at the school. So in a video statement on Friday, Dr. Micah says that he strongly encourages NEISD students, staff, and teachers to wear masks to prevent the spread of COVID-19. He says if that spread continues on certain campuses, those certain campuses will be forced to close. Of course, you can find all of the different school districts on their COVID-19 safety protocols and what they're doing right now on KSAT.com. From Cerna Elementary School, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Sarah. Well, for so many families and students, today is a new and exciting year in the classroom. Southside Independent School District, one of the 17 districts starting up school this morning. And Max Massey joins us live there at Southside ISD. Max, you have been promising robots. Let's see them. 
Guys, if I make a promise, I got to deliver on the promise, and we are doing exactly that. Look at everything we got going on here. We have a drone, we have the Ozobot, we have the Artie 3000, we even have glasses with a camera. We also have Miss Snyder here. We're going to call her the czar of the robots for this morning. So, Miss <laughs> Snyder, why are the robots, the drones, why is it such an integral part of the new lesson plans? Well, it grabs everybody's attention, you know. Um, it's exciting. When do you get to play with robots? When have you ever played with robots? I have not. I'm, I'm jealous of Southside yeah. ISD right now. So we're giving this to our kids so that, you know, someday eventually, hopefully it'll start a passion in them and they'll be able to maybe get a job in coding. I mean, you can graduate high school with coding knowledge and make $60,000 right out of the gate. So that's more than a teacher makes. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Each one is actually taught by coding. Yes, right? yes. Okay, so break it down. Which one can we show off? So um, I can show off right now the drone and the arty, and they both use something called Blockly, which was created by MIT and then tweaked by Google um, okay. so that the kids would be able to understand the coding languages on an elementary level. All right, we're running out of time, okay. so I want to show off the drone. Okay. I want to show off the All drone. Right. Show the people what we got going on here okay. at Southside ISD. Watch out. Okay. It can be a little unpredictable. This is a live TV, guys. We, we don't know what's going to happen here. Okay. Okay, look at that. So kids here at Southside ISD can code this, <laughs> tell the drone where it wants to go. All right, we're running out of time. <laughs> I coded that. Not good at coding yet. So, don't worry, guys. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we are breaking down healthy slushies for students. But then at 6.30, we're going to show you the RD3000. We're even going to show you glasses with a camera inside. We're going to explain why. Guys, back to you. Max, you nailed the takeoff. Good job. Class is also officially beginning today for students at East Central ISD. ECISD will not require students, teachers, or staff to wear masks, but Brandon Oliver, Director of Marketing and Communication, says everyone is highly encouraged to wear a mask as often as possible. They are not required, or, you know, they're not required, but they're encouraged. Um, and then we're doing some other measures as well that we'll continue to have sanitization and we'll uh, continue distancing as appropriate. Oliver says East Central does have other plans in place if a COVID surge were to happen. Coming up later on GMSA, we are hearing how parents who are still not comfortable with sending their kids back to class can continue a course or courses in virtual learning. And of course, there are many other school districts headed back to the classroom this week. We have Falls City, Seguin, Harlandale, Dilly, and many others welcoming students back today. That's a whole bunch of folks. And uh, back to school Monday. We wish you the very best. Good luck this year. 541, about 72 degrees. And still ahead, a big boost for those using the SNAP Food Stamps program. We're going to tell you about the largest increase in the program's history. But first, outside with live cam. Glad you're starting your day with us here on GMSA. More traffic and weather with Stephen and Mike after the break. And welcome back. It's about 544. In your morning consumer headlines, the Biden administration has approved a significant and permanent increase in the levels of food stamp assistance available to needy families. It's the largest single increase in the program's history. Starting in October, average benefits for food stamps, officially known as a SNAP program, will rise more than 25 percent above pre-pandemic levels. The increased assistance will be available indefinitely to all 42 million SNAP beneficiaries. According to the New York Times, the average monthly benefits will increase by $36 per person. Hold off on buying that new iPhone. Apple should be announcing new models sometime next month. What should you expect? Well, analysts tell the Wall Street Journal we'll see incremental changes, including camera improvements. There's still 5G phones, but not yet foldable ones like two models recently announced by Samsung. The expectation is Apple will call it the iPhone 13 unless superstition wins out. Right now it's 545, about 72 degrees. And let's go ahead and look outside with TransSky. We're going to get an update on traffic and weather after the break. It's exactly 548 on another Back to School Monday. And there was a lot of construction earlier this morning, but how are the roads looking now, Stephen? 
Right now, they're pretty smooth, Mark and Steph. As you can see from these shots at TransGuide, it does show right now. We have a few people out on the roadways as we're getting Monday started right now. Looking a little bit busier from this shot here at TransGuide at Loop 410 at Jackson. But overall, it's been a pretty slow morning, thankfully. We're keeping our fingers crossed. It does stay that way. Although a few stalls report this one here off I-35 southbound right at West Martin Street. And we're seeing the same situation happening here off I-37 northbound at Loop 410. So again, as a reminder, check those vehicles before you hit the roadways right now. Things are looking pretty green and as a reminder 17 school districts starting today that's a lot of buses out on the roadways i did get a chance to speak with the executive director of transportation at neisd jack deforest he says while all their bus drivers do have that experience for some this will be their first school year traveling with a bus load full of students hear what he had to say you know even a little extra patience this year because we have drivers who joined us last year as new drivers, and this will be their first year with uh, perhaps three or four full bus loads. Now, again, keep in mind that we will see a lot more buses out there, so be patient out on the roadways. We have a lot more safety tips to keep in mind as we get this new school year started. Guys? Yeah, that's a good reminder. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Uh, nothing really to watch out for right now. If you're heading out the door, there may be a couple of patches of fog. We've been kind of watching some here and there so far this morning. And then as we approach sunrise, probably going to see more of it. Yesterday, setting sun between clouds kissing the tops of the trees. Kind of waxing poetic there almost. I love that. Great picture. Thank you very much for that. Uh, no visibility problems out there at the airport. Looks like... Uh, well, planes getting ready to take off right there, heading up to the north. 72 degrees right now, so we are actually about three degrees below normal. It's fairly pleasant. Look at that mid 60s in parts of the hill country right now, and the dew point temperatures are also down. Of course, yesterday we had a fair amount of humidity, very warm, got up into the mid 90s. Those storms started brewing, got those outflow boundaries, little little kind of mini cool fronts, if you will, that are generated by those storms, and that really dried things out, knocked temperatures down about. Uh, 20 degrees as that front moved through at the airport. The dew points are down three degrees here in town. That doesn't seem like a heck of a lot, but it sure does make a whole lot of difference. 71 versus a 74. So it uh, means the difference between your glasses fogging up when you step outside from the air conditioning or not. There's those thunderstorms that developed yesterday. Of course, they were really packing a punch, a lot of rain when they were just almost sitting still. And then as the sun went down, sort of fizzled on out, that's going to be the situation again today. And we've got this good flow coming in here out of the north as well. Computer model has few showers trying to develop. Nothing is showing up on radar right now. We'll have a couple of them scattered about the area this afternoon. About a 30 to 40 percent chance for some rain today. They'll die down once the sun goes down. Then tomorrow we'll have a couple of more of those popping up around the area. Slightly lesser chance for rain tomorrow, 20, 30 percent. That'll be the same situation into Wednesday with that smaller chance for a couple of showers out there. Once again, tropics, we've got three, well, a tropical storm and then uh, two depressions right now. There is Fred, there is Grace. Fred's moving up to the north. Grace is going to be coming across the Caribbean and gaining tropical storm strength, it looks like, but staying well to the south of us. And we've got another disturbance out there right around Bermuda. Muta, that's tropical depression number eight, and then further off to the east, and things are really starting to get going there because this is where a lot of the storms are born in Africa. As we go into the latter part, mid to latter part, we're almost reaching the peak of the uh, the season, which is in the early part of September, and all of these waves develop here off Africa and come make the trek across the Atlantic Ocean. So that's, and as you can see, it is starting to become a lot more active. But as far as Grace is concerned, as of right now, it is gonna be staying down to the south of us. Now, still a week away, we'll keep watching that, but like I said, no direct hit from that as it looks right now. 89 degrees, couple of stray showers developing today at noon. And then a high temperature today up to 94. Still gonna be on the hot side, but not quite up to the Average high temperature, a few scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. Same thing in the next couple of days, lesser chances for some rain, however, and 95 tomorrow. Rain chances really pretty much out of the picture then by the end of the week, but temperatures will be hot and probably hotter. Yes. Have we hit our average peak? Is, are we starting yeah. to kind of see the backside now? Today is the last day for 97 for the average high temperature. Okay. okay. Then it starts to 
cooled off. Right. Historically. <laughs> Those are playing the averages, and the summer's not been particularly average. No, but it does, okay. th some indications are, and in, in this week, that we'll be at or even above average by the end of the week. Uh-oh. Okay. 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 <laughs> we'll have to pay for it now. We don't have to talk about that part anymore. No triple digits, though. No oh, okay. triple digits. 553, about 72 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, five, six, nine, fireball zero, daily four, two, five, seven, nine, fireball nine. Cash five numbers, six, 11, 12, 13, 16, lotto Texas, seven, 11, 21, 36, 52, 54, and powerball six, 21, 49, 65, 67, powerball 18, power play two. A reminder, we're taking a deep dive in all the problems associated with February's winter storm. It's a collaboration between KSAT Explains and our defenders. Take a closer look at what really went wrong and what needs to change to prevent another weather disaster. It airs tomorrow night right here on KSAT 12 at 9 p.m. Coming up the next hour of GMSA, a big day for many San Antonio area students as they get ready to head back to class. We'll tell you what you need to know. And cleanup underway following an overnight fire on our city's east side. Katrina Weber is standing by with the very latest from that scene. And Transguide right now, let's see how things are looking out there right now as Transguide zooms for us at 35 and Topper Wine looking good, but we are noticing quite a bit more traffic as they pan off to the right and see that traffic coming at you in different direction. Okay, we're getting seasick. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Good morning, guys, and here at Southside ISD, new and exciting concepts across the district. Take a look at this. We even have free slushies, free healthy slushies. We're going to explain what that means and why it's important for students coming up. It's the first day of school for many school districts in our area. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. It's the first day of school at, for NEISD. We're live here at Cerna Elementary School in just a bit on GMSA. We're going to be talking to Cerna Elementary principal about how they are getting ready for the first day. One fire has caused heavy damage to two businesses here on the east side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you what firefighters say got in the way of them knocking it down quickly. That's coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey, look, somebody took a giant can opener at that building east of downtown. Good morning, everybody. That story is coming up. It is Monday. It is August 16th. Hi, thanks for joining us today. And a lot of kids are getting ready for their first day of school this morning. We're talking a ton. Here's a list of all the districts starting today. Uh, 17 of them opening their doors, including NEISD, Southside, Judson, and Harlandale ISD. We're going to have more back to school coverage coming up. But first, let's take a look at morning traffic on weather and a very busy day. That's right. We're at 72 degrees, so not too bad for the first day of school so no. far. How was your weekend, Mike? Very nice. It was pretty hot on Saturday and then had those beautiful showers and thunderstorms. Yes. Boy, I mean, it that, nice. that rain started yesterday and it didn't end for a while. It was coming down in buckets. Some folks didn't see anything and out there at the airport, it was 15 hundredths of an inch, which, you know, not, uh, not anything that's going to be going down to the record books, but wasn't too bad out there. And we'll have the same situation again today where some folks are going to be seeing some of those showers and thunderstorms and a lot of folks will not. We've been watching hints of fog, Bernie stage and Kerrville. This will be the only thing we'll have to watch out for this morning. There's nothing showing up on radar as far as any rain goes. Gonzalez has dropped down to three miles right now. Uh, some fog up there in Austin, Kerrville as well, like I mentioned. So just kind of be on the lookout, especially in the next hours we approach sunrise when a lot of times the fog does tend to get uh, thicker. Mold is low at 220. The updated count is going to be coming out in just a well, probably about an hour, hour and a half and then 72 degrees. So we'll stay fairly steady this morning. We'll see a few more showers, uh, maybe a thunderstorm developed today by noon up to 89 degrees and then uh, a couple of more showers and thunderstorms, about a 40% chance for some rain today and a high temperature up to 94. Still can't rule out a few. Uh, 
showers here and there the next couple of days. Then the trend by the end of the week is going to be for some hotter temperatures. We'll take a look ahead and check out the tropics coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos. Boy, it's going to be busy on the roads later on. Right? Yep, lots more buses, Mike, to be on the lookout for. And we do have these flashing lights here at 35 at Topper Wine. You can see uh, from the shot at Transguide, uh, Mark was talking about this a little bit earlier. We do have traffic that's moving through that area, but take a look again. Those flashing lights out there. Now, Texas did report a crash in that area, but uh, right now it's unclear exactly what we're looking at. It could be a stalled vehicle, a few stalled vehicles. Uh, just use caution driving through there at Topper Wine. Right now, we have this as an incident there off I-35 southbound again, right at Topper Wine Road, not causing any issues when it comes to those traffic delays, but use some caution again when you, those flashing lights are out there. Still some stalled vehicles to be on the lookout for here off I-35 southbound, right at West Martin Street, still being reported out there. Another stall being reported still off I-35 northbound at Loop 410. So it looks like it is shaping up to be a little bit of a busier morning. We know when we get those school buses out there, it could be a lot more busier. So just be cautious and be patient for those bus drivers who are taking the students to school today. Uh, right now, the inbound times are looking pretty good. If you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area here in the next few minutes, Pleasanton has 28 minutes coming in from 37 and 35. We're looking at 17 from Lytle and 18 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and Castorville. So again, shaping up to be pretty busy, and this is a good indication of that. Use some caution, move over, and slow down for those first responders working to clear the scene. Mark Stephanie. Thanks, Stephen. At Southside ISD, the goal this year is to be in the top 10 or even top 3 academically for districts in our area. It's a new and exciting goal, and there are new exciting concepts at the district. Max Massey joins us live at the La Soya Middle School Cafeteria. And Max, what's going on there behind you? <laughs> Good morning, guys. I got to tell you, cheers to the first day of school. We have healthy slushies. Take a look. These are free to all the students. We are joined here, Head of Child Nutrition, Ms. Ramirez. So explain to the viewers, why are there free slushies here? We're having free slushies for the students um, to minimize the waste on fresh fruit that we've um, experimented last year. So we're trying to be creative and get something that the students are gonna like and enjoy. And we found this product, which is gonna offer 100% fruit with zero sugars added and it's going to be able to complete the requirement from TDA for uh, fresh fruit or uh, fruit to the students. Uh, we're going to offer it um, along with also in the near future um, fruit yogurt with granola for breakfast for the students. We are a district which offers free breakfast, free lunch and free supper to all students. Uh, we participate in the National School Lunch Program, running the CEP program, and this year we're on the Seamless Summer Program. Um, we also offer curbside for students who are not able to attend um, school in person and are uh, virtually um, studying. Fantastic. Ms. Ramirez, thank you so much. Uh, so much to digest here, literally and figuratively. We have free, healthy slushies. Students are going to have yogurt and granola, and of course, free meals. Kids don't have to worry about food. They can work on their studies. So that is Southside ISD. A lot coming up. 6:30. We're going to be talking to the superintendent. But for now, we know Sarah Costa is at NEISD. So Sarah, how's it going over there? Good morning, Max. Yeah, it's an exciting time for a lot of these students that are to be coming back. And I'm joined here with the principal of Cerna Elementary School, Jennifer Lomas. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. And good morning. Good morning. You were saying that you know, first off. Um, the big news is that mask mandate uh, by that ruling by the Texas Supreme Court saying students cannot be mandated to wear masks. I know Dr. Sean Micah, your superintendent, said he's still strongly encouraging masks. Um, is that the kind of the feeling here at certain elementary school of, of teachers and students wearing masks? Oh, yes, it is. And even prior to the mask mandate, when we had our summer school programs and jumpstart program in June and July, we still had several students and staff wearing their masks. And I think we are um, here just to make sure that kids have a positive first day of school. We are certainly going to encourage the, the masks and, and model that by wearing them. Um, and we're really just hoping to have the message that we're going to do lots of things to keep our uh, kids safe that go beyond masks, including hand washing, hand sanitizing, having, you know, lots of water, getting outside as often as we can to make sure that we're doing lots of things to keep our kids healthy and safe. And you were saying that last year about 80% of your students wore 
in person this year. Almost 100 percent will be back. Is that exciting for you guys and, and the students and parents? It is very exciting because with that comes new relationships, new friends. We have a lot of kids who came last week to meet their teacher and just the excitement that you see when that relationship starts. There's something very special between a teacher and the students in his or her classroom that can't be matched anywhere else. And so the excitement from families, the excitement from staff and from the kids is um, really high in excitement because they're longing and looking forward to reconnecting and, and moving forward this school year. And for those students that are, haven't been back in person in over a year and also maybe some new students, um, what is your advice for those first day jitters? I know some students and parents can be a little nervous. Yes, one, acknowledge that it's okay for them to be nervous that often, uh, regardless of the circumstances, first day jitters are always um, present. But what we advise um, our families to do is just to come in, engage, um, make themselves visible here at school, ask questions, connect with their teacher, and that we assure them we will take good care of not only their students, but them, the family, as they transition and have a fantastic school year this year. All right, well, thank you so much. Principal Jennifer Lomas here at Serna Elementary School. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll be talking about some new programs they are providing for students, especially for students that may have fallen behind or in the cracks during that virtual learning. Live from NEISD, Serna Elementary School, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. When it comes to all the back to school info you need, check out KSAT.com. We have everything you need to know regarding the most recent mask information, mental health for students, even information on homeschooling, all available online right now. Well, a couple of popular businesses on the east side are closed for business due to a fire. It broke out overnight inside a building which had security shutters on its windows and gates on its doors. Katrina Weber is live at the corner of East Commerce and Walters. And Katrina, is there any word on what caused the fire? Well, fire investigators believe it's related to an electrical problem. The owner did tell us that she had someone out here, a contractor, doing some work yesterday. And so they are believing that that is what triggered this fire. Now, the big job for firefighters was just getting inside this building. You can look and see those uh, those roll-down gates on the windows that have been cut open. That is, uh, firefighters had to do that in order to be able to see inside. They say they didn't even want to go inside this building uh, until they knew what they were dealing with. So they had to get through all of that just to get inside the building to put out this fire. It took a good 20 minutes to half hour, according to firefighters. Let me give you a look at the video from when they arrived around 2 this morning. They found, uh, they eventually did find out that there were flames inside once they got past those those gates. Uh, they also had heavy smoke pouring out of here. Uh, they say again that this looks like it was related to an electrical problem. Because it was already closed up, they didn't believe that they would find anyone inside. Uh, this business was shut down, and so that was the case. No one inside. These two businesses affected Arena Food Mart and Anthony's Chicken are very popular spots here on the east side, and so both of them have heavy damage. They will not be opening again today or for the foreseeable future. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating an overnight shooting near downtown. Happened around midnight at the 500 block of Marshall Street near North Flores. Police say it all started as a man tried to break into a home, and that's when the homeowner shot at him, hitting him in the hand. So the man's dogs started attacking the suspect, biting him in the leg. The homeowner was detained for questioning, but will not be facing any charges. Also new this morning, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the man shot by a San Antonio police officer on Friday. They say 35-year-old Stephen Prim led officers on a chase on the east side. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says it started when Prim threatened a group of men with a gun in the 4500 block of Lakewood Drive. When police got there, they say he took off on his bike and later shot an officer twice. Chief McManus says shortly after a second officer shot and killed Prim, that shooting remains under investigation. Right now, 611, about 72 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about cryptocurrency cons and how to spot them. Outside with live camp, 72 degrees. That's not too bad for the middle of August in South Texas, waiting for that sun to come up on another Back to School Monday. And you're starting your day with GMSA.
And welcome back. It's about 6.15. So cryptocurrency, it's the digital money that's exploding in popularity and also in risk. In fact, cryptocurrency scams have soared 1,000% since October. So before you consider diving into the cryptocurrency craze, there are some things you need to be aware of. David Sears has details. As the popularity and price of Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and Ethereum continue to skyrocket, so do the online scams. The Federal Trade Commission reports Americans have lost more than $80 million to crypto coins since October. Not understanding just what cryptocurrency is seems to be playing into the hands of scammers. You have to be very knowledgeable about what are you investing on so you're not losing your money. You can trade it with other people or give it away. One type of scheme offers investment tips online that redirect consumers to fraudulent sites. In another, scammers pose as celebrities, such as Tesla boss Elon Musk, and trick consumers into sending them cryptocurrency by promising that the celebrity will contribute to their investment. The FTC warns guaranteed returns are always fake, so are promises of free money. Scammers often make big claims without details. Celebrity endorsements or testimonials are easily faked. And be extremely wary of anyone asking you to send a wire transfer or gift card. Investors tend to like cryptocurrency because there's no centralized bank and no government oversight. But there is also no insurance for people whose money disappears. And people between 20 and 49 were more than five times more likely to be conned than older age groups. David Sears, KSA 12 News. Right out 616. And right now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos or flashing lights at 525 on the line. Yeah, not really a good sign when we ever, whenever we see those flashing lights. But the good news is, is that we do have first responders out there right now. And we do know that uh, Texas has reported a crash in that location. So we can verify, yes, a crash has occurred there off 35 at Topperwine. And taking a look at the map right now, we know that crash is located here in those southbound lanes of 35 again, Topperwine Road. It does appear that first responders are out there on the scene helping to assist that driver. So use some caution driving through there. Uh, just a stall to talk about here. Loop 410 eastbound at San Pedro Avenue. Uh, not causing any issues right now. And the same goes for that crash that we just saw moments ago on Transguide. We're not seeing any delays, which is good because we know that there's going to be plenty of buses out there. And uh, as a reminder, when you see those flashing stop signs, here's what you need to do. Uh, driving down a two lane vehicles traveling in both directions must stop when those flashing stop signs come out. And if you're traveling down a multi uh, lane area or road, I should say the same rule does apply. But if you are traveling through a divided highway with a barrier, whether it's unpaved or or not just slow down in that opposite direction. But still, if the bus is in front of you and they pull out the flashing stop sign, you must stop for that bus driver. We know lots of buses are going to be out on the road today. 17 school districts starting today and NEISD head of transportation. We did speak to him. You'll hear from him coming up later this morning on GMS. Say Mike, but we got a lot of stuff, stuff happening on the roadways. What's the weather looking like? Not bad this morning. Actually, it's kind of pleasant out there when you uh, step outside. Humidity and temperatures are down, especially compared to what we had last week, and we're going to be staying in the low 70s. Now watch out though for a couple of patches of fog. There's a few hints out there right now. Not anything too bad, but just to be on the lookout for it. Nothing showing up on radar right now, so the streets are for the most part dry, but we will have a few showers and thunderstorms later on today and then a high temperature up to 94. Beautiful picture. I love this one. That is absolutely gorgeous out there with those big hay rolls in the foreground. Sunset over the hay bales just outside Hallettsville. That's awfully pretty and uh, well, we're starting to see things lighten up somewhat outside looking off with the uh, sun thinking about coming up. It should be coming over the horizon right about uh, about seven o'clock. All right, so we are in the hottest period of the year and the average high temperature has been 97 degrees since July 30th and then the hottest actually average because the low temperature was warmer was from the third to the 10th. So this is the last day though for 97 for an average high temperature tomorrow 96 and it is definitely splitting hairs. But one thing to point out, so we were at 97 for an average high temperature for about that 18 day period, including today. But then by the 28th, the average high temperature is actually down to 94 degrees. So it does start to tail off relatively speaking fairly quickly, although ironically we are going to be hotter by the end of the week and probably getting above average for the first time in well since the first of August. All right, uh, computer models later on today. 
This is that that broad brush computer model, but it does have a few more showers and thunderstorms that are going to be popping up about a 40% chance for some rain today and tomorrow. We'll still have some of those around. Same thing on Wednesday. I think lesser chances for rain and then that's going to continue to diminish even as we go in toward the uh, end of the week. A lot going on in the tropics. There's three areas. The tropical depression number eight. This is Grace and that is tropical storm Fred. Fred's going to continue to work its way up to the north making landfall later on today day around the panhandle of Florida, then moving into the Tennessee Valley. Grace is well, once again, unfortunately for uh, Dominican Republic in Haiti, they had Fred that moved through, then the earthquake in Haiti, and now this one is moving through, and then it's going to be working its way through the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. However, and even though it is heading in our general direction right now, a lot of the computer models do have that staying further on down to the south of us because a high is going to be building on in here. That's the feature that hasn't really been around that much this summer, which is one of the reasons why temperatures haven't been just extremely hot, but uh, it's going to help to keep that potential tropical storm down to the south of us. On the flip side, we are going to be heating up by the end of the week. Today, 89 at noon, a couple of stray showers around the area will begin to develop. And then 94 for high temperature today. Scattered showers and storms still below average for high temperature. We are going to be uh, well, fairly warm and getting warmer by the end of the week. Along the uh, coastal plain by the end of the week. And yeah, those temperatures, we will definitely start to heat up. So kind of bucking the trend all summer long above normal readings by the weekend. My friends asked me if we hit 100 yet. And I said not according to our weather team, but no. nobody wants to jinx it. So nobody <laughs> no. wants to talk about it. And, and of course, that's the official temperature at the airport. Right, right. A lot of folks, you know, have especially to the west and southwest. Yeah, but yeah it's been an unusual Knock on plexiglass. So. Yeah, it keeps working. We'll keep doing it. <laughs> 621, about 72 degrees. And our Spurs summer squad loses a close one in Vegas. We're going to have the highlights after the break. At home with Robert, retired burglar and family man. Setting up Simply Safe is so easy. You could do a blindfold. But I wouldn't recommend it. Anyone can do it in less than 30 minutes. Welcome to Simply Safe. No tools or wiring needed, and voice prompts guide you. Motion sensor detected. Well, that was easy. Ah! Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So trees, you won't take me down. When allergies attack, take Allegra. Before your symptoms take over you. Live your greatness. We don't use just any wipe. We use new Dawn disinfecting wipes. They're tough enough to cut through greasy messes. Yet gentle enough to clean the surfaces that matter most. All while killing 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses. Get the grease fighting power of Dawn in a disinfecting wipe. Our Spurs back in action last night in Vegas for game four summer league play against Brooklyn. Early first quarter, all San Antonio. Joe Wieskamp knocking down the three for the 14-4 lead. Then Trey Jones comes up with a steal, takes it back for two of his 18. Spurs go up 22-8. to They led 30-20 to after one, and they led 53-48 at the half. Fast forward to the fourth, Spurs down by three. First rounder Josh Primo nails the three ball to tie the game at 91. Finished with a team high 21 points, but it wasn't enough. Cameron Thomas went off for Brooklyn, scoring a game high 36 points. Spurs fall 104 100. They will play the Thunder later today. Better luck today. Time now is 626 and about 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Katrina Weber staying on top of an overnight fire on the city's east side. She'll join us live with the very latest. And a quick look outside with Transguide. There's a look at I-35 and Topper Wine. And we're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. It's the first day of school for students in NEISD. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We are live at Cerna Elementary School coming up in just a bit on GMSA. We're talking to the school's principal about a new program they have for students who may have fallen behind during virtual learning. Good morning, I'm Max Massey, and this is RD3000, one of the cool and new robots here at Southside ISD. We're gonna break down the new push for STEAM learning, what students and parents need to know. We'll see you in a little bit. 
two popular shops here on the east side are out of business for now, all due to an overnight fire. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And good morning, everybody. It is Monday, August 16th, otherwise known as another big back to school Monday. Yes, happy Monday, happy back to school, and I hope you got some rain this weekend. So I, I make a confession. I always listen to Mike about the weather. Thank you. All, all, all <laughs> the time, should. and we should, but what I forgot to do, I forgot to tell my husband that there was a big ah. chance of rain on Sunday, and he washed the car on Sunday morning, Oops. so we got a lot of rain. But maybe that's what helped. And I was thinking that too. Okay, so don't. <laughs> thank you, Luis. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't tell Luis the, the four. He should be watching anyway, too, because he's still worried. I mean, that should go without saying. Anyway, I know uh, it was great to see some of that rain yesterday, and uh, a lot of folks did not see any of those showers and thunderstorms. That's going to be the situation again today. We'll have the scattered variety popping up. A uh, beautiful start this morning. A few wispy clouds out there. And temperatures are actually down. We had that uh, kind of a gust front outflow boundary that moved through yesterday afternoon and with those thunderstorms that started developing up to the north. And that's what helped to spawn more of them. And that knocked temperatures down about 20 degrees out there at the airport, pulled in relatively speaking drier air. And we're still pretty much in that air mass right now. So these numbers are well below their respective normals and fairly comfortable when you step outside. We've been flirting with fog. There's nothing showing up uh, in the metro metropolitan area right now. Some fog around Gonzales, Victoria. So just be on the lookout in the next, uh, say, hour or so, just in case some of this wants to try and form up. Mold's on the low side this morning. The updated count's going to be coming out in about an hour or so. A uh, little bit of patchy fog, not overly warm. So we're a whole lot different story than what it was last week, of course, when we had those temperatures that were staying in the upper 70s. A couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms today, about a 40% chance for some rain. Slightly lower chances tomorrow. One or two of those storms out there. Same thing on Wednesday. Then by the end of the week, yeah, a stray shower is still possible, but it is going to be heating up. And we will, you know, the trend has been for temperatures to be, high temperatures to be below their respective normals. Well, it looks like that's going to be the, uh, the opposite by the end of the week. It's going to be mid and upper 90s around here. We'll take a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, of course, buses are hitting the road, a whole lot of them, and Stephen Cavazos has the latest. That's right, especially at this hour, Mike. You know, this is a time where we're going to start seeing a lot more buses picking up those kiddos getting them ready to head to school today. Uh, we did want to bring your attention here to 35 at Topper Wine. We were showing this a little bit earlier during this show. There was a crash reported out there on those southbound lanes of 35, but taking a look right now, things are looking really good right now, especially with this shot at trans guy in the sky sees that uh, shows that the sun is coming out. So a new day is upon us and traffic is looking good. All that crash has cleared. It was here off 35 southbound again at Topper Wine Road and overall the morning is shaping up to be pretty nice so far. Uh, again, looking at these inbound times traveling to the downtown San Antonio area. 24 minutes coming from I-10 and Burnham. We have 26 minutes coming in from Bull Verde and 281 and 26 coming in from 35 and New Braunfels. So green on the screen and it's what we like to see right now and taking one last look at Trans Guy 35 at Topper Wine. Things are getting a little bit busier. Use some caution when you see those buses out on the roadway coming up later on GMSA. We'll hear from the head of transportation with NEISD. Hear what he has to say about this upcoming school year. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Speaking of, NEISD is one of 17 districts in our viewing area starting classes today. The district Cerna Elementary School had about 80% of its students in person last year, and today almost 100% of their students will be back in the classroom. Sarah Costa joins us live with the school's principal as they get ready for the first day back. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, guys. Yeah, it's exciting for some of those students who maybe weren't in person last year. That 20 percent, they're going to be almost 100 percent back in person. I'm joined with the principal, Miss Jennifer Lomas. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And you said that for the 20 percent of students who or any students who might have fallen behind during virtual learning, you have some special programs for them. Yes, actually, we're going to target all of our students because we also want to make sure that students who who made it through the last year and a half on grade level or, or above that we keep pushing them as well. And so we do have an extended year calendar so that we're going to be provided some targeted support during intercession weeks for our students and then built into our master schedule throughout the day. We've built in targeted support time for each of our grade levels so that we can meet every student at their level and move them forward throughout the entire year. And that's new for us, and we're very excited about that. And then one of the big things coming out today after yesterday's Texas Supreme Court ruling that 
school districts in Bear County cannot mandate masks. But NEISD superintendent said yesterday that he's still strongly encouraging mask wearing, and that's kind of the message here at Cerna Elementary School as well. Yes, we're um, certainly going to provide them to any visitor or student who asks for one. We're going to model and, and wear ours to encourage families to wear it. But at the end of the day, um, we're going to just make sure that students connect with their teachers, have a great first day, and continue to do a lot of practices that keep students healthy and safe all year. Well, thank you. Good luck on today's first day. I know at 6.50 the students will be pulling up. So excitement here for those students returning back in person. But we're actually going to toss it out to Max Massey, who is live at Southside ISD. Max, I understand you're learning about the district's new STEAM program. Yes, absolutely. So we were talking STEAM learning, a brand new push here at Southside ISD. And it is so exciting. If you joined us at 5.30, we saw the drone. Didn't have a great landing, but we are joined here with Ms. <laughs> Snyder. Break down some of the stuff that you guys are giving to the students, talking coding. Well, we are really making a big push to give our students careers when they graduate. So starting from pre-K, they're going to be learning about aviation, and we're giving them robots to start with to start that passion in them. Hopefully, we'll get them coding and and having careers as soon as they graduate high school. All right, we know a lot of students, parents getting ready for the day. Show us off what uh, one of the coolest things you got going on here. We have the RD3000. I'm an art teacher, so I love RD. <laughs> <laughs> so explain how this works. You kind of put in a code and it just draws what you yes, want? Yes, yes. So we're using a coding language called Blockly, which was developed uh, originally by MIT and then Google transformed it into something um, easier to use. And I just tell him what to draw using Blockly, and he does it for me. <laughs> That's fantastic. We also have the drone. Mm -hmm, is there any the way drone. we could send that up real quick? Yeah, let's see if it'll... Guys, I know we're taking a lot of time, but this is exciting <laughs> stuff. I know, you know, so many students... Woo, look at there that. There you go. Look, I'm jealous. <laughs> this new generation, they have everything. They have robots. They have coding. They have touchscreen TVs. Look at that. This is all easy to learn, and this is obviously a big push here at Southside ISD. And like Ms. Snyder was saying... That was a much better landing than we had at 530. <laughs> uh, like Snyder was saying, this gives students the opportunity to graduate high school and be able to start a career. This one's actually really cool. You can actually use markers to code this. Yeah, it's the most elementary way to teach them. Um, but each of the colors, it's a specific colors, each of the colors will tell him to do something. That is fantastic. Well, Ms. Snyder, thank you so much. Guys, I wish I had this in high school. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Max. East Central ISD and other district welcoming students back this morning. Officials there say the decision to bring everyone back was based off of an interest of a survey as well as lack of funding. However, there are still parents who are worried about sending their kids back into the classroom amid a surge of coronavirus cases. The district says it will allow some students to continue learning from home if they meet certain requirements. We are not offering remote learning now. There is uh, a procedure in which some parents can do it medically. Uh, they would need a doctor to sign off on it. There's some other paperwork involved in that. When we did the interest survey, it was, it was so low that it wasn't fe feasible for us to do. Brandon Oliver with East Central says parents that want to continue remote learning need to get that medical approval. Some of the other things the district takes into consideration, students grades last year and their online attendance and coming up on GMSA at 9, we're hearing about some helpful resources that are available to parents. And of course, these are just a couple of the school districts headed back to the classroom this week. 17 districts, including Alamo Heights, Kerrville, Jetson, Floresville, and many others are also welcoming back students today. And when it comes to all your back to school information that you need, you can check out KSAT.com. We have everything you need to know regarding the most recent information on masking, mental health for students, and even information on homeschooling. It's all available online right now. Here is other news this morning. Fire investigators believe an electrical problem is what's caused a fire that destroyed an east side building. It broke out overnight at the corner of East Commerce and Walters. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this has affected two popular businesses. 
Well, that's right, this is Arena Food Mart on one side and around the corner we have Anthony's Chicken. Uh, usually there are a lot of people coming and going from this business. Right now the only people here are these firefighters who are keeping watch to make sure that this fire doesn't spark up again. You can see the signs of the struggle that they had. Those openings that you see there on those windows, that's where they had to cut through metal just to get a look inside and see what was happening. But let me show you what they found when they ultimately got past all that metal around 2 o'clock this morning. In the video, you'll see flames and heavy smoke. They say once they got past the metal security gates that are here in place, they did find a, a lot of fire and smoke inside. Now, they did not want to go inside because they were afraid of possibly being trapped. They had no idea what was beyond these gates, so uh, they had to make sure that they had a way to see what was going on. They didn't find any people inside. Both of the businesses were closed at the time. But again, they're looking at an electrical problem as the cause of this fire. The owner did tell us that she had uh, some contractor uh, contractors out here yesterday trying to work on the uh, AC system and some electrical issues. And so fire investigators believe that that is how the fire started, that something went wrong there. Uh, they say that both of these businesses are destroyed. And again, popular spots here on the east side now closed because of fire. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Through this morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need help solving a pair of cases. The first is a murder investigation happened back on July 28th and three on a block of Roosevelt on the city's south side near I-37. And that's where police say a woman on your screen, 51 Christine Elix, was struck by a white Dodge Charger. She was taken to a hospital where she died. Investigators are still looking for both the driver and the vehicle involved. They said that vehicle should have damage on the right front side. The second incident happened on August 10th at an east side home in the 4700 block of Highland Farm. That's where police say someone pulled out a gun and fired several shots at the house. That shooter then got into a car and was driven away by the man pictured there on your screen. If you have any information about either of these cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, that's 210-224-STOP. You could receive a reward of up to $5,000. In your other morning headlines, the Afghan government has fallen and the Taliban are now now taking control. All personnel have been evacuated from the U.S. Embassy. Now the push is to get them out of the country along with the other American citizens and Afghan allies. The U.N. Security Council is set to meet today and a senior administration official says President Joe Biden is expected to address the nation in the next few days about the crisis in Afghanistan. Many of the Haitians injured during a powerful earthquake over the weekend are lying in the open under burning heat, waiting for help as hospitals overflow with patients. Officials have raised the death toll from Saturday's earthquake to nearly 1,300. The country's Civil Protection Agency says at least 5,700 people are hurt. Just about 643, about 72 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to introduce you to a young man who's getting some recognition for his many hours of community service. Michael Frere, a junior at the International School of the Americas in Northeast ISD, has gone above and beyond when it comes to serving his community. Just last year, he launched the Make It Happen Project for students in the San Antonio Metropolitan Ministries Homeless Shelter. We just let them go to different stations around um, that area, and they just got to do art activities for a couple hours and have fun. Michael is also an inspiring leader in the Student of Service organization known as SOS. It gives students the opportunity to volunteer and travel the world. They care about making sure students are getting connected with their community and are learning and are traveling and becoming more cultured people. Michael has gone to three different countries since he was in the sixth grade. One of his most memorable trips was to Lima, Peru. There, he built dorm rooms for girls who had to walk miles to get to class, some living 16 to 17 hours away from school. Michael says he has about 245 hours of service. I'm inspired to see a young man like this, um, learning how to give back to the community and, and just putting that into action and helping others, um, it gives me hope for the future. Amir Samandi, Michael's mentor and SOS executive director, says Michael is just one of those students who can do it all, and he has high hopes for him. I believe Michael's going to be a doctor someday. I could see him going on international trips, helping people in need around the world, using his talents and his medical knowledge to, to help and bless others. As for what Michael wants to do? I still am trying to figure that out, um, but I know that I've I feel good because I've done a lot of change.
At just 15 years old, Michael has already won multiple awards, and this year he has one more to add to his resume. Michael was given the State Board of Education's Student Heroes Award for all of his volunteer work. Congratulations. For GMSA, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tim. You know, the roads are looking really good for this first day of school. 17 districts starting today. US 9035 shows that it's looking pretty smooth so far uh, as we're getting the day really rolling here. Uh, now, as we did mention, we did have a minor issue with some crashes that have since cleared. Uh, stalled vehicles still out there at Loop 410 eastbound at San Pedro Avenue. Uh, now, something to keep in mind, as we mentioned, 17 school districts starting today, and I did get a chance to speak with the head of transportation for NEISD, Jack DeForest, and he does tell me that while all their bus drivers are experienced for some, this will be their first year traveling with a busload full of students. Take a look. You know, even a little extra patience this year because we have drivers who joined us last year as new drivers, and this will be their first year with uh, perhaps three or four full bus loads. And one of the really interesting things here, Mike, is that Jack does tell me that they have anticipate 15,000 bus riders later this morning, uh, disembarking on 8,000 routes. So roads are looking good right now, but what can they expect weather wise? This morning, uh, I pretty much what you see is what you get on some of those trans guide cameras. I'm going to show you more on that in a moment. First of all, beautiful view of the moon. Full moon's coming up on the 22nd. No, it never gets old looking at that moon. And yeah, great start. A little bit of haze along the horizon there. Some hints of fog. Nothing in the metropolitan area right now. It looks like we're going to remain fairly fog free. There was some around burning stage earlier this morning and then well off around Gonzales, a hint of that fog computer model later on today. Now it's going to be a different story because we will have a few showers and thunderstorms starting to develop about uh, say noon early afternoon and then later on scattered about the area about a 40% chance for some rain today and most of us won't see rain kind of like was the situation yesterday still a couple of showers and thunderstorms left over tomorrow they'll be popping up and then dying down once the sun goes down and I think on Wednesday as well and then rain chances are pretty much going to be out of the picture for the end of the week and then we do start to heat up and that is sort of tied temperatures later on in the week to what's going on in the tropics. First of all, there's Tropical Storm Fred. It's going to make landfall later on today, and that's going to work its way up into the Tennessee Valley. Then we have Grace. It's going to work through the Caribbean, grazing Cuba again, and then heading into the Gulf of Mexico. And right now, Hurricane Center does have that well south of us. And the reason for that is we do have um, uh, another, well, first of all, spaghetti models are pretty much in agreement with that as well. High pressure is going to be building in on top of us, which we really haven't seen too much so far this summer. One of the reasons why we haven't been all that hot and most temperatures have stayed well below their, their respective normals or averages. But once that high builds on in, that's going to heat us up, but it's going to push that storm down to the south as it looks right now. 89 degrees today. It's a couple of stray showers developing today at noon, and then a high temperature gets up to 94. Get a few scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. Decent downpours if you indeed get one of those thunderstorms, kind of like yesterday. And then still a few of those shower storms around tomorrow, Wednesday, and then we heat up mid and upper 90s to finish up the week. Very hot at the mm -hmm. end of the week. Thanks, Mike. 651, about 72 degrees. And justice may finally be coming for the family of a San Antonio woman whose skeletal remains were found back in the late 1990s. Our South Texas Crime Story series continues tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam on this uh, back to school Monday. Nice sunrise out there. We're going to wrap up the newscast after this. Good morning and happy first day of school. 17 school districts starting today. We've been talking about it all morning long and right now things are looking good here on the roadways. So you can see from these shots at Transguide 37 at Houston Street uh, getting a little bit busier now that the sun's coming out right now. Thankfully, the issues have stayed uh, pretty calm. You can see on the maps right now, still pretty green around the Alamo City. Seeing a little bit of a slowdown there with a stall there off Loop 410 eastbound right at San Pedro Avenue still reported. The inbound times traveling to the downtown San Antonio area are still looking really good right 
now, but overall it has shaped up to be pretty nice so far as we're getting the first day of school started for these 17 districts. Just watch out for those buses who should be hitting the roads anytime soon right now. Mike, good advice. No problems on the roads, no visibility issues in and around town right now. Temperatures at 72 here in town, some 60s in parts of the hill country, and we will have a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area later on today. 94 for a high temperature today. Still some rain the next couple of days, uh, lesser chances, and then it is going to be heating up by the end of the week, mid and some upper 90s. Parents, students, teachers, staff at all those districts starting school today, the best of luck this week and for the rest of the academic year. Yeah, definitely have a great first day back and we'll see you back here at 9.